Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today I wanted to go over why it is we take part in some of the extracurricular activities that we do here at Ross and Repair Group and explain my motivations. It's not because I want you to see me as a good person. At the end of this, you'll probably see me as a worse person, a person that is more self-interested. The reason I want to share this is because I want more people to potentially avoid the feeling of grief that you have at the loss of a business failing. And above all, if you take part in some of the things I'm talking about, not only may you feel less grief when you eventually fail, but you may actually do some good for the world as a result, which in my opinion is win-win. What am I talking about? At my business and in my industry, most people back in the day when I started this in 2009 really had absolutely no interest in sharing information on how to do repairs with other companies. They thought that by sharing information, customers would fix everything themselves, and even if they didn't, they would go to somebody down the block who did it cheaper, and that they would go out of business. Most people in this business, when I started, had a very zero-sum game mentality about how everything works. If more people know repair, then that's bad for me. I'm going to go under. And the way I saw it was repair is a pie. If I increase the size of the pie, I'm still going to be better off even if I'm decreasing my percentage. I would rather have 1% of a giant pie than 50% of you know a quarter of a slice of pizza. So what I'm talking about here are many of these repair guides that you see here that my nonprofit funds the creation of and also sometimes creates itself where anybody can learn how to fix boards to the level we do. This is very detailed stuff that is on par with our own employee documentation that we use for training my own staff members on how to do repairs. We also have these free repair workshops that we do from time to time where people can come by and try to fix their own electronics using our equipment for free, no charge to them, and we'll try to walk them through things if they have questions and problems this is free and they can use all the equipment here. We also do work with Right to Repair where we go to legislative hearings around the country and we try to get legislation passed that benefits not just us but also the end consumer. I am not doing all of this because I am a lovely charitable person and I care so much out of the goodness of my heart just for everybody else. It would benefit my future run for city councilman or congressman to be able to claim that. It would probably make a good campaign ad, but it would be bullshit and you would know it. The reason that this stuff is so important to me has to do with my second business that failed that I started back in 2010. I go over that in this video, why my old business failed, how to not be a stupid failure like me. I started a supply company, and the reason I started the supply company is because many of the sellers at the time that were selling screens did a horrible job. They either sold stuff with stuck pixels, they would sell the wrong screen and brand it as for a different computer, so they would sell an LP154 WP2 TLC1, which is for a Sony, as an LP154 WP2 TLA1, which is for a MacBook. Same screen, different connector, not compatible. They wouldn't know the difference and it would waste my time. So I decided to start a company that sold screens, but we are actual technicians. So we know what screen model goes into what device. We are not going to screw you. We are grabbing from the same batch that we use for our repair customers. I can't give a repair customer a screen with eight stuck pixels, so I'm not going to buy those screens. You are going to get the same benefit of the screens that I use for my own business. As a result of that, you should have less problems. That business failed for many reasons that I'm not going to go into in detail that I outline in this video. Within one year of starting this company, I knew that I had screwed up in a horrible way that I probably wasn't going to recover from. I kept the company going for an additional two years, but I, I knew that this was pretty much on its last legs, that I had screwed it up personally. And the thing that was so hard here was realizing, looking back and seeing that for three years of work, waking up at six every day, getting to work at seven, working until 10 or 11 at night, getting home at midnight, three years of that every single day. Not only did I have less money at the end of it than I did at the start, which is really amazing because somebody else had actually provided the money for that company. But when I messed up their money, I threw in my own money after it and just, oh my God, it was just a complete business failure. Not only did I have less money at the end of it, but I had nothing to show for it. The company was gone, and that company had no effect on the world. The moment that that company closed its eBay store and closed its Magento store, it would have been like it never existed. So that means that I took three years of my life, and I put it into a chipper shredder, because I, had, I didn't make any money. But I spent three years working from like 7 to 11 every single day. And this is going to sound wrong. This is going to sound inappropriate, but it's, it's just an honest representation of my feelings at the time. So I should just not feel guilty to say it. I've had to deal with loss of life of friends or family before in the past. And I know it's going to sound like it's not appropriate to compare, but that same feeling that I had, that same horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach, that miserable grief, I felt that at the end when I realized that I had essentially wasted three years of my life building something that I had great hopes for that completely died. I felt that exact same feeling and it just ate me up for such a long period of time. I was incredibly depressed and aggravated over it and I couldn't forgive myself just realizing what I had done and realizing that for all of the work that I had put into it, there was not going to be any positive effect. 
not not just for my finances, but I mean for the world in general. Like I had just completely wasted my life for three years. And the reality is that most small businesses in the United States fail. Some like over 50% of them fail within the first two years. And the ones that make it out of the first two years, uh, most of them fail before they get to four or five. Your business, and I'm sorry to say this, there's a very good likelihood that it will fail. And when it fails, you may feel that same disgusted, horrible grief feeling in the pit of your stomach that I did for a very long period of time. So when I started this YouTube channel, when I started focusing on this, one of the things that I said is that when with my repair company, it may fail. But if it failed, I'll be damned if at the end of it, it will all be seen as a waste. That was the driving mentality. That was the driving motivation for me to put up all this content for free, to create as much of it, to open my workshop to anybody who wants to walk in, use the tools if they want to, to advocate for consumer rights legislation, to try and make it so that other repair shops into the future, even if mine fails, may have the potential in the future to be able to get access to parts, schematics, and diagrams, and everything else. And I'll be honest with you, there's a fairly good chance of my business failing. There is. If you just look at the landscape, I talk about it in this video over here. All the parts that I used to be able to get to run my business back in the day are gone. The entire basis of my company for the first four or five years is literally gone. All the parts I used to be able to get. I can't help those customers anymore. I moved to a new space that cost a lot of money to move. It also cost a lot of money in rent. I took a surplus that my company had that I was very lucky to have after the CBC News piece, and I essentially squandered and destroyed it by moving to a new location, which I talk about in this video over here. Further, Apple is going out of their way to make sure that more products are not repairable. Even something as basic as a sleep sensor is now tied using their GSX software. I can't replace that unless I have access to that software that I'm never going to be able to get access to as an unauthorized repairman. There is a very, very, very high chance that my business goes under, not just because of the market in general, not just because of how the repairability of devices is changing over time, but also because, as I've said in this video and this video, I make a lot of stupid business decisions. There's a good chance of that happening. Here's the thing. I can live with my business failing. I can live with not being successful. I can live with not being rich. And I can live with seeing, you know, I put a lot of work and time and effort into this and it didn't work out. What I can't live with is it being a waste. If I can look back on the last 10 years and see that there are people that got started in repair, that got excited about it, that started their own businesses, that fixed something they otherwise wouldn't have fixed, that got data back they otherwise wouldn't have got back, that in some way, shape, or form changed the thought process, changed the norm in society to where people actually value repairability again, even if my business fails, even if my finances fail, even if I fail as a human being, it will not be seen as a waste. And my belief is that when that day eventually comes, and it will come for most of us, statistics are statistics, most small businesses fail, and I am not special, that I want to be able to look back on the last 10 years and think that wasn't a waste. Because the feeling that I had at the end of this business of, damn, that was all a waste, that was a gut punch. That was a horrible, disgusting, miserable gut punch that took me years to recover from. And the reason I'm saying this to all of you is because, let's be real, again, statistics are statistics. If you are starting a small business, there is a damn good likelihood that you fail. And if you do fail, I don't want you to feel that horrible gut punch that I did when my first business failed, working for 12 to 15 hours every single day, no weekends off, no breaks or anything for years and after years after years, only to realize at the end of it, not only do you not have any money, but you didn't really do anything. If you are willing to share with the world, if you are willing to help clean up your small corner of the world and make it just a little bit better, when that day comes for you, my hope is that you won't feel that feeling of grief, that you won't feel that feeling of waste, that you'll know even if your bank account is empty and even if your business model is not viable, for in some way, shape, or form, the world is better off as a result of your business existing than it was if your business didn't exist at all. And that's what I'm doing with this. Again, is it technically altruistic to let people use my space for free to be able to fix things with my equipment? Kind of. Is it technically altruistic to pay people to create repair guides so that any other technician, whether they are somebody working in their kitchen or somebody working for a large company, can fix something again? Yes, but it also selfishly serves my own purpose, which is when this business comes to an end, and someday it will, it won't all feel like a waste. I'm doing this video because I want more people who have small businesses who are concerned about the forecast for it over the next one or two or five or ten years to not just focus on doing everything they need to do to ensure that their business stays successful, but also do the little extras here and there that may result in your business being more meaningful, more purposeful. Having a business where when that business goes away, its effect on society may be remembered for years after.
afterwards so that it won't feel like that colossal waste, so that you won't have that horrible feeling of grief and loss that I did in 2011 when I realized I failed at everything and I screwed up an opportunity that if anybody else had, they could have made a million with. Because I still remember thinking in 2011, if somebody else had the same opportunity that I did, they probably would have been a millionaire in two years. And I took that opportunity and with all the mistakes that I made, squandered it into nothing in a pile of debt. At the very least, I want to be able to say with this business, if it does fail, if I do screw up every single thing, I can look back and say, it had this effect on the world. These people fix things that they otherwise wouldn't have fixed. These people may go into business someday and decide they want to create a product that is repairable, that is more beneficial to the end consumer, that respects their rights and sovereignty in a way that they wouldn't have otherwise because they saw some video on this channel, because they came by my store and got to, you know, put their ball mouse back together with, and by resoldering a sensor or something that broke off of it, and they got to feel that excitement and that fun out of it. Yeah, it's altruistic, and it helps people, but it also helps me. And sometimes, that's win-win. If you have a business similar to this, I would highly suggest that you consider doing something like this when you have the chance to. Again, back in 2009, my business was in a survival mode. I did not have the ability to really share much information because I was working the entire day from dusk till dawn every single day, no assistant, no money, no nothing, trying my best to, you know, keep the lights on and rubbing two sticks together. But once you get to a point where you have just a little bit of spare time, consider giving something back. Not just because it's good for the community, but because it'll make you feel better as well. And above all, it's a great insurance against that horrible feeling of loss that you have at the end when you actually do fail. Because even if you do fail at being economically viable, it doesn't mean you have to fail at being impactful to society. And that's what I'm going for. And that's what I'm going to continue to go for. Because you never know when that day may come when it all comes crashing down. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Thank you very much to the people who've come to the repair workshops. But more importantly, thank you very much to everybody who has contributed to the Repair Wiki. We actually have some new content coming up soon. We're going to have some one-wheel repair content for the one-wheel electric skateboard. I'm very excited to get this stuff contributed in up here because... I did a video with uh, this technician that was about three hours last year in New Hampshire who was absolute genius at working on these things. And there's a lot of knowledge in his head that I would love to get put on here so that everybody else can kind of benefit from it and have fun with those devices. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.